The views expressed on this podcast are based on a satirical view of the subject matter. Please extract the posterior probing device before listening. Now, pick yourself up by your ridiculously enlarged prostate and let's get the episode started. Big O! It's showtime! Tempest Universe, man. Hold on to your ass. You're in for a hell of a ride. Welcome to the Hump Day episode of the Tempest Universe. Oh, man. I don't know what's going on. It still feels like I'm on... It's Monday. Like, you know, that horrible feeling you get from Mondays. Everything's rushed. You got too much damn work. And it seems like it's never going to end. I still feel like today is Monday, even though it's Hump Day. Uh, What the hell is going on? That's the way we're living right now. We're coming out of this pandemic and uh, it's back to work, man. And now we're going back to work. You got like triple the work. What the fuck is going on? What is wrong with this world? After a pandemic, you know, you're supposed to be beat down to hell. Uh, The infrastructure should be shit. There shouldn't be any work. And, you know, everybody's just in the days. But that's that's not what's happening. Everybody's in a rush to get back to it for some reason. Uh, Just completely crazy to me. I want to say what's up to the guys who showed up super early, as usual, in the uh, live chat on Spreaker.com. We got Green Man. I got myself. I'm in there. Game Vets in there. I mean, come on. These guys are here. And uh, they're ready to find out what's going on in the world of ufology, strange news, space. We got two from SpaceX today. We haven't had that. Well, fuck, I was away for a while. But anyway, um, a lot of things happened with SpaceX while I was gone. A lot of things are happening right now. Actually, today, they actually had a scrub a uh, static fire down in uh, Boca Chica. Or, what is that, Starbase Village? <laughs> Whatever the fuck it is he wants to call it. The guy has billions of dollars. He gives no fucks. He changes geography the way he fucking feels like it. Yeah, forget about having a, a government in place. He gives no fucks about that. But anyway, today's Wednesday. We got uh, one kind of like an odd story, but not so odd. Not so odd at all, out of uh, New Mexico. And then we got, uh, we're got we going to catch up with SN15, talk about Crew 2, and uh, Canadians. I know you guys are out there. You're usually number two on the uh, top ten countries that listen. But uh, Canadians are holding out. Like, we've been telling people about uh, New Fork forever. New Fork and um, the other sad place, MUFON. But New Fork... You gotta love it. You gotta love New Fork. I'm telling you, get an experiment. Figure out the days of one of your favorite UFO situations, you know, whatever incident it was, and then go to New Fork. Search their damn database. It is huge. Decades and decades of reports in this free database, unlike those fuckers at MUFON who decided to church, uh, charge people just to get into that damn database. It is the most ridiculous thing ever. That's um I think that's when I started like uh turning away from MUFON, right? The mutual UFO uh pedophile network. And but then when the pedophilia came out, well shit, you know. How well how do they say that uh the icing's on the cake? I guess. With a little cherry on top for me when that happened. Uh I still not a fan of MUFON, you know, because they um they did a whole 180 on the whole space thing, but hey, hey, what the hell? What what do we know? We're just blue collar people listening to all this, uh, as they used to say back in the day, rigmarole regarding UFOs um, and all these agencies trying to report stuff, trying to one up each other to see <laughs> who's got the best reports. Apparently, no one can fucking wait until June. Shit! By the time we get to June, we don't even need the damn report. Everything's already out there. I'm just saying. We got a little bit of the coconut rum today to join us in this uh, trip we're about to take. 
But uh, as usual, as I get started, there is like one thing I like to do that you probably don't get in very many other podcasts out there is play a little music for you guys. Some of you hate it. Some of you love it. Some of you are like, uh, fuck it, i got to listen to something while I'm sitting here at work uh, on the shitter during my unscheduled break. So I'll play this for you and everybody else. I'll be right back. give you guys a bit of TMI. Uh, ever since I moved to Mexico, Mexico. <laughs> see, this is what I'm saying, Wednesday, it's not hum day anymore. Uh, ever since I moved to Texas, I've been uh, privy to a lot of like uh, Mexican cuisine, you know, a lot of Mexican food that's like, it's not Taco Bell, basically, it's it's like authentic, right? There's a lot of like mom and pop restaurants all over the state, so um, it's different, it's not, it's not Taco Bell, but this week, I took on the, the taco the Taco Bell for some reason. It is really strange because once you you eat the uh, authentic food for so long, and then you get the I don't know, 
the dumpster fire of of uh, Taco Bell. It tastes so fucking good. I, I just it was really good for some reason, and I was like, wow, really. But ever since then, I feel like I need to be the one down in Boca Chica ready for launch because, for fuck's sake, there's something in Taco Bell that gives you the worst fucking gas. I, I don't know what it is, and it just won't go away. It really would. I'm telling you, I could give Elon and the Starship a run for its money. Uh, I'm not even lying about it. It's, it's, it's horrendous. <laughs> Talking about Elon and uh, all the craziness that's going down there at uh, Boca Chica SN15. Now, I, I listen. I, I know some of you don't keep up on this on your own, but did you realize that we um, kind of skipped a bunch of numbers? Like Elon was like, "Fuck it, if these things are not landing right, we're going to skip all these um, these numbers as far as the Starship is concerned. Let's go straight to uh, number 15." SN11 had this. Um, I don't know. Rapid disassembly. After successfully it landed, it did a little hop. You know, kind of like a little stutter. And then after they cut the feed, the thing blew up. So there you go. Apparently there was some kind of a leak. So uh, I guess at that point, Elon's like, well, screw it. We've got all this great stuff on SN15. Uh, Forget about 12, 13, and 14. Let's just uh, go right for the big one. Apparently, SN15 has... A lot of improvements on it. I mean, for fuck's sake, it's probably been sitting there for about four months. So this apparently is going to be the one. This is going to be the one that should not be uh, assemb- uh, disassembled on the scene. Hopefully. There's a lot of things they're putting on the outside of the craft. There's a lot of new technology on the inside. And it is very possible that on Friday, we could see, finally... A good hop where there is, once the smoke clears, a fully standing silver phallus known as SN15. That's what we're hoping for. Now, today they canceled the static fire. As you know, with uh, SpaceX, static fires are important. They need to make sure the shit's working. As a matter of fact, they even uh, do static fire with all their other rockets, even the Falcon 9, before they get to launch day. So... It is very possible that this could be the one. Now, I don't know about you guys, but uh, usually I'm glued to uh, YouTube watching the broadcast just to see what happens. And, you know, some of these things last the whole damn day, so get ready to waste some time, to be honest, uh, if you're going to watch it. But SM15, keep an eye out for it. This is apparently the version that uh, is going to prove some things for us. I hope so. I hope this is the one. And then we can get into what they are planning to do, and that is going to low Earth orbit with uh, hopefully, you know, SN45. I don't know. I think they were saying SN21 or SN22 would be the ones that would actually make it into low orbit, which would be fantastic. But again, if I were living South Padre, if I were living in a Starbase city, Anywhere down there, yeah, once this thing goes into low orbit, for fuck's sake, I would do like a fucking hurricane is coming in off of the uh, the Gulf. Move the fuck out. Go somewhere. Go into a shelter uh, until at least they get at least three of these things up there into low orbit without uh, any accidents. Because better safe than sorry, right? And listen, there's a lot of uh, empty open land out there in Texas, especially down in that area. So for fuck's sake... It might just land somewhere where no one is and uh, no one gets hurt. But still, uh, it is a a test vehicle. That's what it is. It's a mule. Except it doesn't have a bunch of uh, the good stuff, you know, the powdery stuff. But it's a mule nonetheless. So you got to be careful. You know, protect yourself accordingly. Don't don't just take it, you know, don't just assume that their uh, precautions are going to protect you. Even if it was a safe, you know, we could be at SN3000, even at that point, you know, shit can still go wrong. It really can. So Friday, get ready for it. Hopefully SN15 is going to do it. No accidents, no disassemblies, and um, the Environmental Protection Agency will be happy. The FAA will be happy. 
and we can go and you know tag up the uh, the silver phallus as the one that did it. Launch, no failure, no blue pills for those guys. Uh, again, uh, the guys that are in the live chat, you got Dre, possibly Davina somewhere in there. Uh, welcome Dave from Down Under. Got to appreciate Dave to be on here because, you know, the time over there is a lot different. But uh, thanks for uh, showing up, Dave from Down Under. Here's the next one. The live chat right now. I think Gamevet is asking if I said that uh, that the Silver Phallus had a hard on. No, I don't think I said that, but I can't remember more than thirty seconds in the past. But uh, and I think it's all this gas. Um, but it is an erect Silver Phallus, so you can probably infer that that's what I was saying. That you know, SpaceX has a erect card on uh, down in Boca Chica. I don't even know where the hell that's going, but uh, what can you do? You know, there's something about Canadians when it comes to UFOs. Like, uh, we know the ladies down in Alt Pop Repeat, you know, that podcast. They haven't been here in a while. Maybe they'll show up eventually. But they've, they're they they're doing all these things. They're out there. They are literally uh, chasing the UFOs, you know, with other podcasts, I guess. I wish I had sad music to play right now, but I don't. Uh, commercial airline pilots keep reporting UFOs over Canada. Canada. Now, Canada has this thing. It's called the K-Doors. 
I don't know. <laughs> it almost sounds like a band. The K-Doors. The K-Doors. I don't know. If you're Canadian, do you say K-Doors? Do you say K-Doors? I don't know. Uh, the sightings come from the Civil Aviation Daily Occurrence Report System. Um, hashtag K-Doors. It's basically, it's a searchable database. Kind of like New Fork. Searchable database that is operated by Transport Canada. And uh, for the love of Pete, they've got incidents. I feel like after this podcast episode, I'm going to have to go in there and, uh, you know, search (laughs) K-Doors. I don't know. It feels like a pop band. I don't don't know what it is. It really does. But you can go in there and check out some reports of what's going on over the skies of Canada that are being reported by commercial pilots. You know, we've had some, historically, some famous UFO sightings. You know, coming from uh, from Canada, over the skies of Canada, like that one uh, from back in the day, way back, from uh, the Chinese um, commercial aircraft going over Canada and had an unexpected situation happen with a UFO. And uh, that got reported. You know, you see it all the damn time in all these specials or these uh, UFO shows that like to investigate stuff like that. It's a pretty popular one. But even in this particular database, you can go in there and check out what they got. Here's an example. May 30th, 2016, Air Canada Express. The flight was from uh, Montreal to Toronto, and apparently the uh, pilots got a visit from a UFO. Now, again, I want you to pay attention to the year. 26, what the, 2016, people are getting... On this disclosure bandwagon like crazy. 20 fucking 16. This is not from the 80s, 70s, not even from the mid 90s. 2016. This is like five years ago almost. So they're up there, and uh, this is what they report that they crossed an unidentified flying object, uh, round in shape, flying at an approximate speed of 300 knots. For those of you who like. Um, you know, math that's from uh, the other side of the pond, or stuff that you need to translate. Uh, that translates to 550 kilometers per hour, and um, it was over 8,000 feet over Lake Ontario. And here's the thing. The two crew members were actually uh, surprised. At this, and the first thing they did was reported. This is something that's going extremely fast. It caught them by surprise. And how many times do you see a flying round object hitting those speeds? So far up off the uh, a commercial airline. Like when I was flying to Florida and also to North Dakota, trust me, I always sat by the window just to look. And there's a lot of things out there that play tricks with your eyes, believe me. But these guys fly daily. These are commercial pilots. They're constantly flying. There comes a point where you become the subject matter expert as far as what you would see in the sky and what causes, you know, these visual anomalies. These guys know, they're professionals. There was another one that uh, over 8,000 feet over Lake Ontario on November the 14th of 2016, two crew members were actually injured when a Porter Airline plane dove to avoid hitting an object. The object was solid and shaped like an upright donut or an inner tube. Again, they're reporting these things. These are real situations all from 2016, and they can be found on this database. So if you're if you're interested in what's happening over the skies of Canada, here it is. Here's your way to go in there, and you could even do a project, right? You can take the sightings from New Fork, take the sightings from Canada around the same time period, and see, is there a connection between what the Canadians are reporting and the incidents that we have here in the United States? It's a fantastic project, let me tell you. I'm glad I thought about it, and I'm glad you're going to take that on and uh, put that in your wheelhouse somewhere. Uh, There was another one that uh, included a pair of WestJet flights near British Columbia, 
And apparently, this was a bright white strobe type light. And above them, on the night of uh, March 16, 2017, pre-dawn, January 10th, there was another encounter of the same craft outside of Regina, Saskatchewan. And basically, this was uh, multiple aircrafts reported with very large objects with a small white light in the middle surrounded by a halo that appeared to descend from above 41,000 feet. Do you Tic Tac? I don't know. You might. It's funny how a lot of these old these reports, they're not even old shit. This is 2017, but a lot of these reports, as you start getting them in, it feels like the Tic Tac has been doing his rounds. Maybe it wasn't a crazy anomaly or maybe these guys weren't chasing another airplane or it wasn't some fancy newfangled drone. But nobody knows. There's a lot of people today who are saying that all of these reports are strictly and completely coming from Russia. It's hard to argue that it is, but uh, it's very difficult to um, say that it isn't because we we don't have any we don't have any real leads on this. And that report that's supposed to be coming out is uh, unfortunately not going to answer any questions that we might have once we read it because. Usually that's what happens. They put out these reports. You go through it. You got more questions. You want more answers. And you got to wait a few dozen years just to get them. You know, while they figure out whether or not you can actually see those. What can you do? But the K-Doors, go ahead and visit it. I suggest you research it. I'm going to. I'm going to check some stuff out. You know, I want to check out if uh, maybe the... uh, the Phoenix Lights. Maybe they came down from Canada right into uh, Arizona. It's very possible. We might just be able to find a connection to the K-Doors. Uh, the link is in the description to this article and the rest of them. Um, some of these stories were a little choppy the way they put them together. But for fuck's sake, uh, what can you do? We got the information we need. We know where to go search. So uh, let's just get to it. Be right back.
Now listen, I, I um, this uh, particular craft was delayed for a bit because I, I remember initially, for some reason, they thought it was funny to schedule the launch of the Crew Two on April Fool's Day. <laughs> the joke's on us because it never happened. But from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, of course, tomorrow morning, scheduled for a liftoff time of 6.11 a.m. Eastern. That's kind of early for me. I mean, I don't want to be watching, you know, this uh, Crew 2 going on. But anyway, that's when it's going to happen. Maybe. There are two days scheduled for this particular launch. It's going to be tomorrow morning or sometime on Friday if uh, things go... All right, and it doesn't get off. Um, but here's the here's the funny thing: the Crew Two is actually the same vehicle as the uh, Crew Demo, <laughs> which uh, Bob and Doug called the Endeavor. The very same craft. I don't know if I would get on that damn thing. I'm sorry. I just know. No, I can't. Uh, this is uh, the demo. Two was actually the one that uh, was used back in May of 2020, almost a year. So, you know, maybe they got the kinks out. You know, that thing when it came down, it looked like a burnt marshmallow. I mean, no. Why would I want to ride in that shit? Somebody get me a new one. Like, I need a new I need a new Q, uh, Crew 3 or uh, something that does not call the demo. Why would I want to get on the demo? This is It's not cool. But anyway, so uh, that's what's going to go down. So Bob and Doug will be sitting somewhere watching it on TV. They might even be down there in Mission Control, who knows, uh, to send off the new astronauts, Shane Kimbra, Megan MacArthur, and from Japan, Akihiko, hold on a second, I could do this, Akihiko uh, Hoshida. That's probably what's going to happen if something goes wrong. Uh, I probably messed up his last name, but yeah, it, it is what it is. And also joining them would be from the European Space Agency, uh, Thomas Pesquet. Like, you know, little kids, when they want spaghetti, you say Pesquet. So, the crew true? <laughs> the crew true. The crew true is going out there. Uh, so, that's why we've been seeing the uh, Falcon 9 doing all these static tests, uh, getting ready. And these guys actually went down there to visit that particular rocket back in uh, the middle of April uh, when they had their first little uh, NASA teleconference to talk about how great SpaceX was that they put us on a used fucking rocket. I don't know. I feel I feel afraid for them to be honest. I don't uh I don't think that as an astronaut I would like to be part of that ride. It just it feels scary. I feel I feel scared for them. I really do. And I don't think this is a good deal for them. Um Steve Stitch, the manager of the commercial crew program down at Kennedy says we're we're go- we're ready for launch. We're done. We got the two days planned out. And actually, according to them, they, uh, it looks like an 80% chance of a good launch. The weather looks good. It looks fantastic. Now, the only thing they don't know right now is if, if some shit goes down and they have to abort, they're not really clear on what the weather is going to look like in those places. So I guess I got to take that into consideration because for fuck's sake, if the thing... You know, if the Falcon 9 blows up and then the Crew Dragon pops off, you know, off the head of that thing, um, and it's going to abort, you don't want it to land in the middle of a hurricane. So I guess the weather's got to be good all around in order for them to to make this thing right. So there you go. And actually the weather, the weather came from the 45th Weather Squadron, which gave him that 80% chance for favorable conditions to uh, launch that bitch. I don't know any other way to say it. I I just figure I just go street. Go full street on it. Uh, So get ready. This is the one. Now, Bob and Doug, listen, they love that thing. They love the the crew demo slash endeavor. They were all about it. All they did was come down and and praised SpaceX for the cool accoutrements inside of that vehicle. So hopefully, you know, it all goes well. We can only hope for the best. And uh, hopefully these guys will make it to the ISS, uh, which actually they won't get there until the 23rd, and they'll be there for a whole last six months. Can you imagine being at the ISS for six months? Like really, that's a that's some real uh, 
coronavirus type of pandemic isolation right there. You know, being up with these people, half of them you probably don't even really know, uh, just hanging out for six months doing experiments and shitting on that billion-dollar toilet. That probably is the highlight for most of them, putting their tush on all that money. And, um, God, that would be an experience, man. That will be honest with you. You know, as an astronaut, that's probably the one thing I'd be looking forward to, is getting on that shitter. And uh, I wonder how it works, though. That's uh, We might have to have an episode just on the billion-dollar toilet that they have. There's got to be a story in there somewhere, right? Somebody must have fucked up a few times. Can you imagine getting the squirts on that thing? You got to go back and make you polish it. I'm pretty sure it's good. It's got to stay looking shiny. Otherwise, it wasn't worth all the money. I'll be honest with you. That's the craziness that we talk about on the uh, on the podcast here. You know, that's that for me, like, fuck the experiments. I wouldn't even care. I'd like to get my tush on that damn shitter. That's what I want to do. And then take pictures, selfies, and beam them down using all the expensive satellites. Why not? Uh, so get ready for that. I mean, I'm going to try to be up. You know, I usually get up about 5.30. Uh, a little bit earlier, it wouldn't be so bad just to see these guys take off. You know, hope them. I hope they make it. I hope. You know, wish them the best of luck in uh, getting on the <laughs> the Demo 2. Why don't they just fucking call it the Demo 3? The same, I don't know. Like, really, after I saw that... Sitting at home, as the next guy is to go up, seeing that burnt marshmallow come down and uh, get pulled out of the water, I would not want to be in the same craft. I'm sorry, I just... Uh, these are the times we're on. Cheap-ass fuckers. Can't even get a bunch of these things together. I don't know what to do. That's a, that's a story. There's a little bit more to it as far as the type of experiments that they're actually going to be doing up there. But, uh, you know, a lot of that shit just falls secondary to the nice toilet. I'm just saying.
was another story out today that the uh, Igor at your belly, um, you know, is doing his thing, getting ready for his own version of the ISS. Because, you know, that's, that's where he's taking all the Asgardians. But still, Russia also right now saying that they they want to dump, basically dump the ISS. They don't want to be hanging out with these Americans or these guys from Japan and China and all these places. The Russians want their own spot. So they want to get out of this whole business of uh, sharing their accommodations and expensive toilets with uh, the Americans. Listen, you guys in Russia, really, why would you give up that toilet? You know that if you get your own spot, your own ISS, the damn thing's not going to have a toilet like this. Your space station is not going to have this on it. It won't have all these great things. You guys know. That when you put that shit together, it's not going to be like this. So maybe what I'm thinking is, is that eventually we're going to have, you know, Igor at your belly and the Asgardians join forces with the Russians, right? Because a lot of people think that um, it's kind of strange that he has all these connections with the Russians when he's building his own space nation. We got to go visit him next week and see what what's going on with him and his space station and you know guarding the planet from evil space aliens uh igor oh igor yeah now there's one last news article for you guys it's really one of those quirky, weird things. Really, I, I was looking for something weird. You know, like, uh, you know, somebody giving birth to a llama or something like that. I don't know. And uh, But I came across this one down in New Mexico. It was a spaceship-inspired house. And it was, uh, it went on sale back on April the 19th, I believe, a few days ago. Now, this house is a two-bedroom, two-bath, 1,430 square feet, which actually has a pending sale already for 265000 But the price and the size is, is not what matters here. Wink, wink. Is the fact that the house is designed and decked out with this space theme. The image for this episode is actually the backyard, the back wall of this backyard of this damn house. Look at that thing. It's, it's a thing of beauty. I would love to go back there with a grill and burn all kind of food just because I'm busy staring at the magnificent job that uh, Martin Griego did in his house. It is it's amazing. You know, and the thing is, spending 265000 for, you know, your forever home is one thing, but to get one decked out like this already, that's that's something else. I mean, could you imagine where you would go from there? All the shit you could add. You know, there used to be those houses where people would design their bedrooms and their restrooms, you know, like a a room on the Enterprise. You can take it that far because the damn thing's already in space. Just look at the backyard. There's a lot of pictures in this particular article. If you want to check the house right now, but there, it is a, a pending sale on it. But Grego, he went crazy, you know. He says that uh, he kind of, he went in there one day. And he was like, I got to do something because I like space. So he started decorating. And then it just continued from there. He just kept on going. The craziest thing. He said that he thought himself as um, being in the universe someplace or being on an asteroid or something like that when he was doing all this designing. The um, the Southwest Elite Realty is right now the folks that are selling the home for uh, uh, Graco, Graco and the family. But listen, it is a wonderful looking house. I just suggest you guys look at it. Some of you might have those ideas. You know, a lot of times when people get houses, they want to think about themes. You know, they'll have like the uh, the toilet, the restroom that's uh, ocean themed. You know, you feel like you're running your feet through the sand somewhere. While the damn seagulls are going over you and you're trying to take a dump. I mean, people do stuff like that. I'm just saying. But imagine having a house like this guy 
fantastic. I love it. It's 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 not weird. It's creative, but you know, people I'm sure think he's a little bit out there. So I'm surprised they didn't ask him any questions on the interview regarding the whether whether or not he believes in aliens, and uh, does he think that the uh, Department of Defense is really going to put out a report for us? I don't know. You know how you know people tie all kind of shit together. But, you know, hats off to him. That is uh, Martin Grego. He did a great job. It is amazing. And he even took the fireplace and kind of decked it out like it was part of a spaceship. Listen, it takes it takes a lot of uh, creativity to do stuff like that. So instead of being a weird story, it's kind of one I just wanted to share. And uh, I'm sure you guys in New Mexico would love to get your hands on this. If you believe in... Uh, ufology i'm sure you would this is the end of the podcast i'm getting a bunch of text messages here gotta go answer them and finish this uh coconut i have here coconut rum uh apparently i didn't mix it so now like half this cup is all rum well i guess i got a party by myself me and Bob's are going to be here finishing off this libation and then i'm gonna send you guys a packing with a new day hopefully i get in touch with uh ronnie dawson a.k.a. Alien Shagger 17, can see if he'll come on and talk to us about his uh, his appearance in, uh, in that Alien conference. But I'm not going to give the name of it. I want Ronnie to come out here and give us all the info. And if you're listening from out there, hopefully you get to meet Ronnie in person. He's a crazy guy. He's funny as hell. I can tell you one thing. Big old love talking to Ronnie Dawson. That is a 100% true story. Hashtag it. And with that, I say ciao. Until next week. Get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast. Look at eggs. Brush my teeth up. Wash my face. Mm-mm-mm. Start my day. Wake up, get up, get up. Stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast. Milk and Brush my teeth up, wash my face Throw my clothes on, start my day Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that today will be a good day Okay, I know that today will be a good day A, B, C, one, two, three Drink some water Brush my teeth, get out of bed and I stretch Bed in my hair is a mess Look through my clothes for a fit Anything I do is drip Feel like a kid when I'm TikTok And I still keep it real as it is I show my age, I don't switch Often I'm just as a dad as a kiss Try taking naps with my kids Talking, I'm guessing this life how it is And I can't wait for the weekend Keep jammies on like I'm a kid Wake up, get up, stretch my legs Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs Brush my teeth up, wash my face Throw my clothes on, start my day Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that today will be a good day Okay, I know that today will be a good day Feel good, feel great, can't come Plain. Look out my window, see birds and planes Sun's out, some clouds, it might rain Siblings on my nerves, on my nerves again Summertime go for a swim, wintertime go grab a sled Spring I might need an umbrella, fall back in school with my friends Attitude change like the weather, my mom tell me it never ends Like clocks we evolve in a circle, every 12 months we do it again Wake up, get up, stretch my legs Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs Brush my teeth up, wash my face Throw my clothes on, start my day Wake up, get up, stretch my legs Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs Brush my teeth up, wash my face Throw my clothes on Stop my day. Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time.